Herzlich willkommen, liebe Zuschauer. Im Moment passieren so viele Dinge in der Welt, wo Menschen sich Gedanken und Sorgen drüber machen. Und ich möchte ein paar Dinge ansprechen aus verschiedenen Bereichen. Ich möchte aber anfangen mit dem vermeintlichen Anschlag auf dem Breitscheidplatz in Berlin. Wir haben in der Tagesenergie-Sendung 98 schon darüber gesprochen und es gab viele, viele Menschen, die ganz unterschiedlich reagieren. Einige, für einige ist es ganz klar, dass da viel mehr Fragen als Antworten äh, zu stellen sind. Und die alternativen Mö Medien haben natürlich besonders die Pflicht, Fragen zu stellen, die die Mainstream-Medien überhaupt nicht ansprechen. Andere haben sich aufgeregt, weil sie gesagt haben, wir könnten doch nicht einfach behaupten, es gäbe keine Opfer. Ich glaube, das haben wir nicht behauptet und es können, das kann man auch nicht wissen, was genau passiert ist. Aber Fragen zu stellen bedeutet ja nicht, dass man mhm. die Opfer verhöhnen will oder dass man kein Mitgefühl mhm. hat, sondern im Gegenteil, auch ein Kriminalkommissar, der einen Mord aufklärt und nicht sofort den erstmöglichen Verdächtigen verhaftet, sondern weiter forscht, wenn Fragen auftreten. Da sagt man ja auch nicht, dass der kein Mitgefühl hat oder dass er äh, die Opfer verhöhnen will. Ähm, ich habe viele Diskussionen mitgemacht in verschiedenen Foren und es gab auch Leute, die sagten, ich, sie kennen welche, die ähm, jemanden kennen, der da vor Ort verletzt worden ist und der das erlebt hat. Und äh, wie könnten wir irgendwie Zweifel daran haben, was geschehen ist? Und ich habe immer wieder nachgefragt, ich würde gerne auch jemanden einladen, der vor Ort war, der das erlebt hat, äh, der vielleicht verletzt worden ist. Und ähm, natürlich wollen wir nicht äh, die Opfer verhöhnen, sondern im Gegenteil Klarheit und Wahrheit. Nur wenn man dann nachgefragt hat, dann kam immer, ja, die sind halt, äh, die wollen nicht darüber reden und die sind vielleicht sogar beleidigt, weil wir eben schon mh, angezweifelt haben, die offizielle Version. Und ähm, viele, viele Fragen, die dann auch auftauchen. Leute, die behauptet haben, sie wären vor Ort, aber wenn man auf ihrer Facebook-Seite dann guckt an dem Tag, ist es überhaupt, sie schreiben über alles Mögliche, aber nicht über dieses Erlebnis, was sie angeblich erlebt haben. Viele, viele Fragen, aber wie gesagt, da kann man spekulieren. Ich will hier gar nicht spekulieren. Es bedeutet, wie gesagt, nicht, dass ich hier Behauptungen aufstellen möchte, was da passiert ist, sondern ich möchte mir Bilder angucken die einfach Fragen aufwerfen. Eine der ersten Fragen ist natürlich schon bei diesem Bild hier, ähm, warum diese Betonbarrieren nicht da gestanden haben, äh, als dieser Anschlag stattgefunden hat. Es gab in einer Sendung jemanden, der sagte, auf allen anderen Weihnachtsmärkten, wer hätte auf alle Fälle... ...licht und, und die... The page at www.wallspiritradio.com forward slash listen. Please come early to ask your questions. Now, on with the show. The next two hours will be full of debate, interview guests, and up to date news. Please join Simon and play an active role. Connecting Consciousness Show. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Hello, JP. Hello, Simon. How are you? Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. That's a very, very uh, advanced echo system in the background. There. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, well, because uh, I had to do the new, the new jingles, I added a bit of a, a little bit of a sparkly spice to it. <laughs> so. <laughs> How have you been? It's been pretty, uh, pretty much all... Been, I've been okay. Um, uh, hopefully some people will have seen the, the latest interview that Kerry very kindly put up. Um, I met Kerry to do uh, an interview, and it was very interesting that that morning I'd been uh, subject to uh, a form of psychic attack uh maybe quite bad and I was just absolutely determined to be well enough uh for her interview which was I think about two o'clock in the afternoon. And um we got a lot of interference and I think I haven't watched the interview. I, I don't ever watch once I've done an interview that I've done it. 
I don't watch it again. But people who have watched it have said to me that depending on which camera you're looking at, there does appear to be some form of interference. And uh, we certainly was, were aware of a portal type that was trying to open. Um, and whether this was for good or ill, we don't know. But certainly there was interference of some sort going on. And when you look, uh, you can see, I think, the backdrop of the curtains, there appears to be wavy lines. There certainly was an energy, and both Kerry and I were aware of it, and others in the room. Um, but it didn't stop the recording. It didn't didn't have any effect on that. But uh, what, what we did have, and I don't know that Kerry reported that, was that we did take a break uh, to get some food in, and um, some of the team went off to get the food and um, uh, I was uh, with Kerry and uh, we noticed all these <laughs> blue flashing lights outside where we were. We actually weren't at my place, we were in, we're in another location. We thought it would be better to do the interview in an independent location uh, for safety's sake. And uh, there was a fire engine actually trying to get in to this is a sort of a secure area with a gate and um, trying to force the gate trying to force the door um, and odd as, as um, people came back with the food they turned the blue lights off and off they went and Kerry said to me that she had done an interview somewhere else and there'd been the fire brigade had all turned up there and said there was a fire and they'd had to stop the interview and go off and there'd been no fire at all. So when she saw the fire engine outside, she saw, oh my God, here we go again. Um, but they couldn't get the gate open. It was one of these gated communities. It wasn't able to get access. Otherwise, I'm sure they would have come running in and said, everybody out, there's a fire. So that was actually very interesting. So that interview went ahead and was posted. Um, it was really nice to see Kerry. I've got a lot of time for her. She's a a real lie warrior she gets in there and gets stuck in so that's uh, posted and that's out there now wanted to uh, move to America now and say of course the uh, president-elect Donald Trump takes office on Friday so we are just less than a week away that is important because at the moment we have what we can genuinely call no man's land we have a president who's still in office in name only um, and a new one waiting to come in and there's a vacuum and uh, we've got all sides now jockeying for position so that when the new president comes into office whatever position they're in that's the position they start from so um, I, I personally can confirm there was a small gun battle in Manhattan I had it reported to me from two sources I'm not an American, uh, so I don't know what Lower Manhattan means as opposed to Manhattan. <laughs> one one report was Lower Manhattan to me, and the other was Manhattan. But there was a gun battle between the CIA and the NSA um, in a secure uh, telecommunication building, which has a deep uh, bunker underneath, and it's actually in, in the major major city in Manhattan. Um, but the the point I wanted to make about this battle, this 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 very small gun gun battle that took place, was that it wasn't um, organisation against organisation. Uh, you can't say that the CIA was fighting the NSA or vice versa, but they were individuals within their respective security branches who um, were fighting a turf war uh, because they'd taken something personal. So, for instance. It's not unusual to place uh, large amounts of explosive uh, threateningly under a building that belongs to one of the secret intelligence agencies and then do a tip off or th threaten them. But there was a particular bomb that had been diffused, I understand. And so one element took it against another element and there was a fight. Now, whilst this is not unheard of, JP, uh, it is highly unusual and it's only occurring now because the old guard and the White House are about to change and to be replaced by somebody who, you know, doesn't dance to the same tune. So if anyone does hear about an alleged 
gun battle in Manhattan between the CIA and the NSA, uh, the information I received is was accurate, but wasn't was only more, uh, less than six people. But nevertheless, that that's true. Um, in in his uh, pe- presidential address, in terms of his first press address, uh, which took place very recently. Um, Trump actually mentioned that he'd been offered a two billion dollar deal in Saudi Arabia and had turned it down. Uh, again, this is a another message to people that you know he's not going to be blackmailed or he's not going to be bought. And again, in his uh, press conference, uh, it was actually a press conference, not a speech. In his press conference, he made it very clear that he was backed by generals and admirals, and he actually got into almost an argument with one of the guys from the press and he accused the guy from the press of being a peddler of fake news now that's really important because if the incoming president is now going to start accusing mainstream media of peddling fake news uh, we will see an increase in the public looking at the alternative news so any organization that is not funded by an established news, I think is going to get a lot more attention now. Before Obama left office, he had signed some orders, um, making it even more um, easy, that's the right word, for authorities to attack uh, alternative news agencies. And I'm hoping that one of the first things Trump will do is say to the police and the, the authorities, leave them alone. That's really important. Um, there have been an upsurge or an upswing in the number of independent radio stations or independent spokesmen and women who have found themselves being shut down. And that's literally within the last three to four weeks. Um, and a name that may be known to some of our, our listeners, um, Harold Kautz Vela, who I did actually, uh, listen to who was giving a talk in uh, London last year, very much talks about uh, Magellan's disease and its connection to fourth dimensional entities. Um, now, whether we, you know, we, we believe that that's the case or not doesn't matter. The fact is that uh, he's on the point of being arrested um, and charged with uh, sedition, which is a very strange term. And this is really because when you are a professional whether you are a doctor, a scientist, an astronomer, you belong to an accredited body. And if you act in a way that the accredited body don't like, then the accredited body will not just throw you out of the club, but it will try and take legal action against you. The difficulty for, for Harold is that he is actually a scientist. He's a professional scientist and he has gone public with you know, information and they've gone for him. Now, I personally believe that this is because Obama has signed an act, I think it was six weeks ago, but it didn't come into effect until about four weeks ago. He signed an act that made it easier for, or it, or it encouraged the establishment to go for people or, or organizations that don't repeat the accepted news. And I'll just finish on and the Trump bit, um, I thought it was absolutely amazing uh, and amusing as well. Uh, Trump took a question from a guy from the BBC. And the guy from the BBC was terribly upper middle class. It wasn't a white guy, but he was terribly upper middle class. And uh, he stood up and he said his name. He said, I'm from the BBC. And Donald Trump said, oh, oh, there's another beauty But because this guy was upper middle class, he thought that he was being paid a compliment by Donald Trump. And he said, oh, thank you very much. Uh, And it just shows this huge gap between people of the established media who haven't a clue what's going on. And their editor or their boss says to them, right, you go out and you attack this person or you go out. This is the story we want. I don't want anything else. I don't want this, that, and I want this. So, of course, question after question was being put to Trump wasn't about policy 
what are your plans to do to uh, get more jobs? What are your plans to cut tax? It was all about hacking because what the establishment want to do is to try and get back at Trump because their person lost and they're terribly bad losers. So um, I didn't get across. I thought the more people that see this, then the more people are going to realize just um, what the real truth is. So, so that's important because until Trump takes office, which is in another week, we could still see some some rather nasty things taking place as both sides fight for uh, a position of supremacy. So that's that. I wanted to, to say that anyone who's keeping an eye on alternative media will have seen an upswing in the number of sightings. Um, I, I was aware of a couple before the weekend that had been reported to me, and then this weekend two more, uh, not just in the States, but, but predominantly in the States, lots of uh, fairly close flying craft, which could be uh, human military or could be um, off planet. Um, and that, again, is a, a, a warning, not to, to the people of the Earth. Uh, this is a warning to certain governments or certain factions of government. So, you know, it's, it's like in the old days of Great Britain when the natives would be rebelling and they would send a gunboat. And what these off-planet entities do is they have a show of strength in the sky. You know, it can be different factions. So that's what's going on at the moment. Messages are being sent to government. Um, you get sort of a fleet of uh, craft, alien craft in the sky, and that is a message. Um, so we are... I'm not going to say... They're definitely well, alien, those before Simon. The, um, most of them are. I think uh, I've, I've been aware of six... Four of them were definitely alien, two were not. And I'd say the two were not were designed to be up and flying, to be a counterbalance to whatever was expected. And often you'll see people have reported um, orbs or, or discs in the sky sometimes being surrounded or escorted by helicopters, particularly, or jets. And uh, this is either because that craft is being given an official welcome or an official, you know, de departure or it's arrived and it's neither friend nor foe, but they are, um, shielding it, keeping everything else away from it, giving it a flight path, if you like. Now, what's happening is that, that one arm of the military will put up its own back engineered craft on Tuesday, then Another arm of the military, which is antagonistic to that arm, will put its up. You know, we've got these as well. And then you'll get something that's off planet. This is the game, if I can use that word, that's going on at the moment because there's a power vacuum in the most powerful country in the world. I know America's bankrupt, but it's still the most powerful country in the world in terms of its ability to put pressure on foreign governments. That is weakening and eventually will go. So um, what I'm saying is the next four to five days are a bit destabilised. Um, and once the new president takes office, then, then things will calm down. So so not thankfully, not too much to, to worry about just at the moment. So that's my update. Uh, I do want to um, obviously take questions. It's very important. That's what we do on this show. But I want to make time after our break, our for the first break to talk a little bit about a project that I and Wynne and uh, JP, you're very involved in this and others. Uh, it's a barter trade platform, an electronic system, which we are hoping if we can get the funding uh, to bring to the planet. So I'm going to talk after the break a little bit about that um, and um, try and get that out into the human consciousness. So that's where we are at the moment, JP. Okay, so here we are now. Where are we? Let's, let's get to the question. Right. Okay. So let's ask this, this first question. <clears throat> um, our first question is about going back to source. Simon advises to imprint oneself with the thought, "I want to go back to source." Good. Yes, I do. But there is an aspect that is worried: what might happen to me, my soul, when I go back to source? Do I, as an individual, cease to exist? Do I just dissolve and start anew? I feel the opposition to the thought of dissolving, actually. Right. No, no need to worry. Um, 
if if we go to source, then I can't think of anything much better. <laughs> um, you know, a good cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit sounds pretty good at the moment, but then going to source is the best thing that you can do for most people. You're not um, dissolved or discontinued or, or, or zapped and started afresh. Your history is your history, and that's what will appear in the Akashic Records, unless one has the uh, connection with Source to have them removed. Most people don't have that right. So, and you wouldn't want it to remove it anyway. So if you have a history, that is your history and has made you what you are, because if you lose that history, you will lose that learning. So uh, a good example, many, many people on the planet um, come here from a fourth dimensional phase and end up working in the Vatican as a black magician and they do that for a while and they realise that it's awful and evil not all of them unfortunately but many of them and so they go through maybe three or four centuries of incarnating on the planet moving further and further away from that until they end up a very independent spiritual um very psychic, but a very spiritual person. And they've completely moved away from where they were five, six, seven hundred years ago or, or more. Now, that person is the person they are today because of the experiences they uh, occurred to them, but the learning and understanding that came from that. So if you went to source and you had all that wiped out, then what the heck would be all the point of the 2,000 or 3,000 or million years of incarnation because it would all be for nothing. So no, if we go to source, what happens is we get given the choice to break the pattern that we've been in and go somewhere else. So for instance, let's take somebody who's fifth dimensional. Um, could be a Palladian, could be an Andromedian, could be someone from Arcturus plenty of others and that fifth dimensional person is created like we all are by source and has a life on many planets and then finally finishes off on earth and goes through life here and then manages to break through the net finds a hole gets through and succeeds to get into source now that person can go anywhere now that person might say i i i, I want to go to the sixth dimension or the seventh dimension or i want to go back to earth the point about going to source is that you have one of the right to reconnect with your creator and therefore you can be catapulted to any anywhere you want to. So you still retain all of your memory, all of who you are, but you are just elevated to the next level. Uh, and so please have no fear. Going to source is the best thing you can do. So, thank you. All right. So, meanwhile, uh, hmm. Actually, this uh, this this one's about um, an astral assault. So, oh, that's a long one. All right. It's from Nate. Probably Nate. All right. I've had this pre. Uh, hello, JP and Simon. I've had this problem occur frequently over the last year. When I'm laying in bed and go to sleep, I get an intense pulse of pressure inside my head rather aggravating and wakes me up sometimes. It seems to be intelligent or at least defensive since I can focus on it and the pulses, or attacks as they seem to be, increase in volume until it's a con constant pulsating rhythm that's very unpleasant. It's always seemed to be some sort of artificial and mechanical technology within my aura. It's never acted on its own until recently. I thought about the pulsating sens sensation about two weeks ago while I was wide awake during a conversation with my girlfriend. And this time something seemed to be attempting to take me over somehow. I felt a strong squeezing in the back part of my head in my brain and felt very uncomfortable every time she would say certain things which were of a spiritual psychic nature. They were very good things she was describing. But something did not like her speaking of such things and caused a lot of anxiety within me and as, I, as I listened to her. This feeling was accompanied with a bad case of the heebie-jeebies or the creeps. I had to stand up against the wall because of the sensation that someone was standing behind me. Throughout my life, I've had strange sensations that others were there with me or standing behind me looking over my shoulder. I've been caught a glimpse of shadows out of the corner of my eye during these episodes. I never let any of this bother me but much, but this time was 
this last time was too much and kind of pissed me off. I became ill right after, which I'm just getting over. Almost I never get sick or ill. I'm being attacked by an entity. Am I being attacked by an entity, or is it more simple than that? I don't think anything would confirm its existence and give itself away with me, with something like me. Some, oh, sorry. I don't think anything would confirm its existence and give itself away with someone like me. This last episode seemed like some force was attacking me. Please tell me what you think this is and what I should do to banish such things from my life. Thank you for all you're doing for humanity. Love, Nate. So, long question. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's fairly classic, actually. It's a fairly clear-cut case. Um, negative and obviously negative. Negative force, and we can look in a minute what that will be. A negative force will attempt, um, in the first instance, to um, take you out of your body. So to take your energy self from your physical body. If you fight that and resist that, which is clearly what's happening here, because the first part of what was written is exactly that. Some people describe it as a juddering sensation. Some people call it vibrational. Um, some people just say it's very slight, and other people say it's like being on a flight, because everyone's uh, energy and, and reception energy is different. So if something is trying to lift you out of your body on several occasions, which might be over, you know, 20, 30 years of your life, and is failing, then it will go for a direct assault. Now, uh, the person who wrote in very, very helpfully gave us detail. And, and what they wrote was that they stood against the back of a wall because they thought something, somebody was behind them. That's really helpful, because what we call that is an overlay. Um, And it's not a million miles from what David Icke, many years ago now, was trying to alert people to. But back in those days, it was just too much for most people to grasp. What happens when an entity cannot remove you in your body because you're just too spiritual or you're just too strong, it will attempt to rest over you. You know, if you would take a, a sheet or a, a handkerchief and you drop it over an object, it will drop over that object and, and broadly it will follow the lines of that object. If you were to drop it over a, uh, a jug or a glass or something, it will form around it. So what I'll try and do is drop onto your aura field and if they can't penetrate the auric field, they will drop around it and they'll always attack you in the back all of them, whether they are fourth dimensional entities or whether they are interdimensional demons, simply because um, on the physical world here, our eyes are at the front of our head. Now, when you're psychic, uh, you will normally have 75% um, psychic visibility to the front and the remaining 25% is at the back. Some people have 50-50 or what have you, but the majority of people on the planet at the moment, the psychic capability um, is reduced behind them, but is in front of them because of where the third eye is. So you will always be attacked from the back. Um, That tells me that something is trying to connect with him and take him over. Uh, it's, fortunately, it's very classic. It's very common. Um, because he's aware of it, I think it's a guy, because he's aware of it, um, he's right that he's not going to try and open a dialogue with him. Often these things will try and do a deal with you. And um, I suggest... Um, well, the good news is, just change the subject very slightly, but we're answering the question. The good news is that I'm on the verge of going through... Um, Lots of people who wanted bookings and start getting back on the booking lines again. Um, you know, so I would suggest that he emails in. Uh, he will have to take his place because there are other people who have emailed and I'm going to be on them. But uh, I, I think it would possibly benefit him to have a one-to-one chat with me uh, and I can give him some specific individual ways uh, in which he can help himself. But to do that, I would have to learn a bit about him. And his, because what these rather pathetic entities do is they attempt to find what I term a back door. 
Um, we talked earlier about people who've been magicians, but if you in past lives have been around something, done something, you will have um, happiness because it's part of what we learned. And we should love every part of us. But nevertheless, there'll be a part of the frequency or an element which something negative could try to, you know, pick the lock or try and get in. And that's what they always do. And if you can just bar that, um, metaphorically speaking, then you can very simply stop it. So very good um, question. Um, good because 